What's up team, welcome to the video. I'm about to do a Q&A answering questions from Jamie's most recent vlog, um, which is gonna have some good stuff, both on like the strength and muscle gain and the fat loss side of things. And I told his audience that I'd answer questions and uh, it's just looking like a Q&A video would be more efficient. It's late, by the way. It's almost 5 a.m. It's like getting light outside. I'm trying to be kind of quiet because they're asleep, but yeah, let's dive in. This dude looks so much like Mike McDonald. Yeah, I've heard that before, Timex. I always think back to this two plus two thread that's like rating dudes one to 10 and Timex was the nine. So I was like, yeah. Got, uh, let's see. Would love to hear what you have Maddie doing. Um, so Matt is training five days a week. He has like each day he's hitting a muscle group, like a primary and a secondary muscle group. So one day back is primary, but we're deadlifting and doing a little bit of posterior chain. So like a hamstring move too. And then he has a leg day, but we hit a little bit of arms on the leg day. So like legs are the primary on that day, uh, arms are secondary on that day. He's got chest with a little bit of shoulders. He's got shoulders with some triceps. So like it's a body part split, but there's four to five sets of a, another body part on an off day that's like three or four days staggered, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, every day starts with a move in like the three to six rep range, but most of the volume we're doing, like three to four sets per exercise, five-ish to six exercises per day, and uh, most of the work is in the six to 12 range. So trying to get size like muscle hypertrophy is just calorie surplus plus number of intense sets and I'll link an article down below because there's like progressive overload or adding in some way over time adding weight adding sets adding reps really isn't necessary for hypertrophy or is far less necessary for hypertrophy meaning muscle gain than it is for making strength gains so we are overloading. We're trying to get Maddie stronger because strength is going to lead to the ability to lift more. It's going to lead to the, the ability to build more muscle, but it's really just like eat the food and do a lot of compound, a lot of isolation moves, a lot of intense sets, sleep, get it. Yo, stop acting like you lift, bro. You look like a 12 year old anorexic girl. <laughs> Why are you giving weightlifting tips? You look like you've never been in the gym. Bro, I feel you. Like, I just lost 16 pounds of body fat and I feel super small and self-conscious and your comments aren't helping me. So yeah, I'm kind of pissed that I, I was training for a fight. I'm still going to fight, but like, yeah, I'm walking around at 165. I do look like an anorexic girl. Rhonda would pwn you guys. <laughs> Yeah, go check out the vlog. I'll link it below if you want to hear Jamie's theory on how he could two-on-one with a buddy take Ronda Rousey in a fight, which which they just couldn't, sadly. <laughs> what is Maddie walking so much for? So, uh, cardio is beneficial in a calorie surplus. Some cardio is beneficial on a calorie surplus, which improves insulin sensitivity, which is going to lead to more of the excess calories being partitioned towards muscle gain than fat gain, marginally. When you have 150K on the line and the goal is to add as much weight as possible, we're not thinking about like a pound or two of muscle versus fat, right? We're thinking about don't burn five hours worth of calories. Um, but the hike was like a like a group bonding activity. I agree though. Maddie is done on on like even two hour hikes. Although he's on pace, he's from one thirty four to one fifty in seven weeks. Like he's he's way ahead of schedule. Um, I feel like Mike and Jeff would get along. That's really funny. Jamie said that too. I don't I don't know Jeff. I wasn't too sure about Mike Vicanti at first, but he seems like he knows his shit. Thanks, Patters. Uh, any chance we can get a detailed rundown of what the plan is for exercise and food for both you and Matt? I should do like a blog post on that. 
um, but I'll do like a, a semi quick rundown in this video. So Jamie's current food plan is 1500 calories max. Keep in mind right now we're targeting three and a half pounds of fat loss per week for I don't know how much strap we want to give away, but in, in, a, in any fat loss phase, it becomes harder to lose body fat the longer you're in a calorie deficit. So if the, the, the linear way to lose all the weight is lose two pounds a week, you don't want to lose two pounds early on. You want to be like ahead of pace. Um, and, and so 14-ish to 1,500-ish calories with ideally like, ideally 150 to 180 protein, uh, he's keeping carbs low because he likes to keep carbs low and it's historically worked well for him Like in the past Jamie lost a lot of weight on a ketogenic diet, which I'm not a huge huge fan of um, but I do like the The psychological and motivational boost that you get from the drop in scale weight either on keto or on just a, a Standard low carb diet with higher protein and non outrageous amounts of fat, but he's eating mostly clean foods um, trying to get him to eat more vegetables, a smoothie a day generally, and then a, like a decent sized meal and sometimes a PM smoothie as well. Matt's eating everything. <laughs> Matt, macros are not being counted. <laughs> uh, he's getting plenty of protein. We got in the habit of eating protein with every single meal. So in like an eat everything muscle gain phase, you're actually giving away a little bit of progress if you have non-protein meals. Right? Like if you woke up and just had a bag of chips and uh, a bowl of cereal, for example, and then your second meal was, I don't know, three bananas and like, what else do we have in here? Any non-protein source, a, a candy or something. Um, that's something I'm getting Matt in the habit of doing is having some protein with every single meal to maximize muscle protein synthesis, which is going to lead to marginally more muscle gain accumulated over the course of a year. Like one meal every single day that had zero protein, that we're adding at least 25 grams of protein over 300 days, 320 days that we have left, um, is gonna make a difference in how much of that scale weight ends up being muscle, which is important. Like, we don't just wanna scoop the bet. We want, like, we don't want Matt to feel like shit about his, like, we don't want him to feel like complete shit about his physique uh, after putting all this weight on. We want him to be in a position where he has as much muscle as humanly possible, win the bet, and then he goes into a three to five month cut where he hopefully at the end of that has like an absurd physique. He's 20 years old. Like, I wish I would have done a one year bulk at age 20 and gained as much muscle as I possibly could because that just pays dividends later on. Like it's, it's just a base, it's a base of strength, it's a base of technique on compound movements. Like we have him squatting, deadlifting, bench pressing, um, but yeah, his food plan right now is just eat, 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 and uh, try to get protein with every single meal, pay attention to scale weight over time. So if he's not gaining weight fast enough, we're gonna have to start tracking calories, tracking protein, like dial things in. If he's gaining weight too fast, I'm either gonna have him peel back a little bit on just like hunger cues instead of being stuffed 24 seven, let's be like, you know, one notch down from that, um, but right now, no tracking. Matt is not looking healthy. <laughs> That's not true. Um, no doubt Rhonda beats your faces in. Maybe there aren't that many. Oh, and training stuff. I talked about Matt's training already. Uh, Jamie's training. We actually just, just started. So I ran him through like a little mini assessment, 10 moves, body weight basically, that I like to see to see how he moves, see if there's pain anywhere, which is based off of what's called a functional movement screen, uh, if you're super, super interested. Um, but we then did a little body weight workout and Jamie actually moves super well, especially in the lower body. So what we're gonna be doing, in addition to having this on his, upper traps, mid traps, under his scaps, and then get in on his pecs as well, uh, just because he does have a lot of like stress and tension up here, is three days a week in the weight room 
on just a standard strength training program. And I feel like I need to justify this because I don't think it's obvious because strength training doesn't have, it doesn't have a ton of merit for a pure weight loss bet, especially early on, like his scale weight. This might bring his scale weight up or normalize it for a period of time when it would be coming down, like a short period of time, seven to 10 days. But um, that's because when you strength train, your capacity to store carbohydrates in your muscles as muscle glycogen increases. And with every gram of carbs, we retain somewhere between, it's like three to four grams of water binds to each gram of carb in the muscle cell. And that can lead to an uptick on the scale of depending on the person, two to six, seven pounds. Um, but it's still necessary and it's still important and here's why. Long term, like we wanna scoop the bet, but many of you have heard of yo-yo diets, I'm, I'm sure. Having a desire to strength train and enjoying strength training and strength training being a habit is so beneficial in not rebounding with fat gain because even if you go back to like eating a lot of food and like more crap, eating a calorie surplus, whatever, but if you consistently train, you're just gonna minimize the amount of fat gain. Um, and you can feel better like more lean tissue in the lower body is uh, like strongly, strongly positively correlated with lower mortality rates. There's just infinite benefits moving around feeling better. So we want to make strength training a priority. Um, yeah. So we did the body weight workout, which was in a recent tonight's vlog. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing day one of three days a week, like very, very basic. We'll see how he moves. We probably won't be like barbell back squatting. Um, probably do a goblet squat for his primary squat day move. We'll probably deadlift. I think he'll be able to conventional deadlift or sumo deadlift. And if not, we can kettlebell deadlift. Um, but yeah, a strength move. He'll be doing like less frequency, like I said, three days a week instead of five and less volume per workout than Matt's doing. But yeah, three X a week. Bit like like starting strength with a little bit more upper body accessory work and a lot of like, we're gonna hit a lot of volume on face pulls we're gonna hit the rear delts just everything that undoes this you know um wall slides like get his scaps moving up and down it's gonna be good A lot of comments about Ronda Rousey beating up Jamie and Kevin. Respect. Um, this weight loss bet is a joke. Do the physique of both brothers. Jamie is naturally heavy and his brother is naturally thin. It's a gene thing. Don't mess with mother nature. I'm not going to touch that one. <laughs> this guy thinks I'd look... Amazing that you're hanging out with the 1996 WSOP main event champion, Huxseed. I think. I assume Bob is saying that I look like Huxseed. Fun fact. In the 2011 main event of the World Series of Poker, Huxseed knocked me out late on day two with ace nine against pocket sevens. Big blind versus button. There's no way they're winning this bet. Matt is only 66 kg. Is there any way to put money on this? Because I would gladly do so. By the way, this is nothing against these guys. Yes, I am, I'm looking for action on this bet. So uh, I'm down to like, I mean, no offense, MP Reen, but we would have to escrow with, with someone, like somewhat reputable, but I'm looking to put a lot of money on this. Um, potentially, I have zero dollars on it as it stands, but like, if the opportunity existed for me to put a solid amount of money on this, I would. Your trainer looks a little bit and talks like Mike McDonald, Timex. Definitely the wrong guy for Matt. He's bony as fuck. Should we do like a, should we do physique a minute? No pump. I'm like, I'm like not that bony. I mean, I'm like, Oh, this is thumbnail. Thumbnail. It's a little douchey. It's like 7 out of 10 douchey, but it's all right. It's a one-take show. Um, 
Rhonda Punch is harder than 99% of the world. 100% agree. Keep it going. Mike would love input on the training side. Jamie Staples, what light up keyboard do you use? Yeah, I got a lot of faith these guys are going to continue this at this pace, if not better. Mike McConty, what do you think about water fasting for like a week? Would you consider it something for Jamie in case he's close to failure? I had never heard of water fasting until this, which is apparently you just consume zero calories. You consume zero anything except for water. Uh, I don't think it makes any sense, like especially this early. Um, so no, I don't, I don't have any plans to, to do zero calorie diets. Like I get one day fasts, but no. It's not, uh, not something we're playing on. What are my thoughts on Bulletproof Coffee for weight loss in general? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of like pseudoscience. So I'm cool with, if you want to allocate however many grams of fat, because I'm not 100% sure if it's 24, 28, 36 grams of dietary fat towards your meal number one of the day, like that's great. Uh, medium chain triglycerides, which are the types of fats found in Bulletproof Coffee, um, are less easily stored as body fat than other types of fat, but nowhere near like the difference between not consuming that fat, like having zero calories versus having 36 grams of fat times nine calories, or like 328 calories. Um, for the cognitive effects, I'm not opposed to it. I just think that Jamie would rather for satiety, for lifestyle enjoyment, I think he would rather have his coffee like he does now, which is usually one or two double espressos within 60 to 90 minutes of waking up uh, as zero calories and then reallocating the dietary fat that he could dump in his coffee into later meals to make those more enjoyable. And things so far that he likes doing to make those enjoyable are hazelnuts in smoothies and uh, like the cook we have uses a decent amount of butter and oil. Um, so even when cooking a lean protein like chicken, we're picking up some fats uh, from what is being used to cook the chicken. So. Yeah, Bulletproof just doesn't make a ton of sense when you're on 1,400 cals and like trying to get a good amount of protein. Just don't have that many fats to work with. Maddie, I doing too much cardio, bro. Mike, tell Jamie to get more sleep. Jamie, you should be asleep from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m but should also be getting eight hours somewhere in those times. So I don't have the, I agree, Ben, I agree. Uh, not necessarily more, but like, and I don't have the data in front of me and I'm not super well read on this, so I don't wanna just like talk out of my ass, but um, sleeping when the sun is actually down is more beneficial and has something to do with circadian rhythms. I'm, I just don't know, but I know that it's more beneficial to sleep from like 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. and sleep eight hours there than it is to sleep from 4 a.m. until noon. Uh, with Scoop going on, which for the non-poker crowd is a, a once a year tournament, um, his schedule's just set. But yes, after this is over, we're gonna get on like eight hours, and he's been sl sleeping close to eight hours, but uh, we're gonna get on a real like eight hours in bed, 10.30, like up at a normal time schedule. Good looking out, bro. So effing hype for you, Jamie. Me too. You got this, never give up. Hugo, that's good advice. I'm gonna thumbs up that comment. What we need is Bill Perkins to get down there with his boat to visit you guys. <laughs> I think that's pretty much it. We've talked about Matt sitting in front of the TV all day versus uh, doing cardio. We talked about both of their training programs, nutrition plans, talked about sleep, talked a little on Bulletproof Coffee. Uh, we talked about 
me looking like a 12 year old anorexic girl. We talked about just the, the momentum, like these guys are on pace and like the vibes here are, are nice. Like, and Chris too, Chris who's super underrated, um, who's behind the camera on Jamie's vlogs. And they're doing daily vlogs, by the way, uh, which, are, which are pretty sweet. So I'll link those up below. If you got more questions, leave them. I'm happy to keep, keep jamming, but yeah, let's do it. The ultimate sweat, trying to win like 150K. And for real, I'm actually, originally I thought it was unethical for me to bet on this, but like every single poker person I talked to was like, why would it be unethical? Like it, it just, I thought of it as like Pete Rose and betting on your own team, but um, yeah, I want to get money on this, but I think it's too late. I think like, I don't know. Let me know if you want to bet. All right, I appreciate you guys watching. Please hit the like button. It helps my videos get more reach. See you tomorrow. I won't see you tomorrow. I'll see you soon.